McGee, both Stoney Curtis and Herschel Savage up here. Herschel Savage, Stoney Curtis to the stage, please. I need Herschel Savage. Oh, fuck me. It's Tony <laughs> Curtis. Let's go. Do you motherfuckers understand how much fucking time goes into this bullshit? Do you drunk fucking heathens can have a good time? Suck it. Make some fucking noise. Clap for these people. Where the fuck is Herschel Savage and Tony Curtis? Herschel's gonna blow. Herschel, put your fucking pants on! Herschel! Oh, you come out of the curtain. Come from behind the curtain. Good. Oh, that's not her. That's... Come on, come on, children. Oh, that, that's exciting. There's one. Okay, go for the induction. And then we get Stoney. Stoney! Stoney! Get up on here. And this is um, something that's very special for him. And I'd like you to make it special for you as well because you might be going to lose something. So if you wouldn't mind giving some attention and not talking for 40 seconds, keep going. I know how to keep going. Louder! Louder! I'm not going to scream. How is everyone? I just want to say that I have never remembered a collection of more beautiful women and men in my time in the industry. Congratulations. You guys are hot. Okay, so before I, before I begin this presentation, I just want to say on a personal note, that I was able to first meet Stoney in 1997 when I returned to the business after a 10 year layoff. Okay, this is the only industry that in your 40s, if your cock works, you can still come back. And fortunately, it did. And the one thing that struck me about Tony, Stoney, is his absolute love for the industry. He loved sex, he loved pornography, and he loved being a part of it. Now, can you repeat what I just said? <laughs> okay. Please, give me your attention for a second. I'm going to tell the story of Stoney Curtis. Brian, a.k.a. Cheeks, or as you know him, Stoney Curtis, perversions began at age 10 in the late 1970s while I was making porn films in New York. Stoney used to wake up hearing the Doors music and watching his older brothers having sex in his room at 3 a.m. Being the youngest of a large family meant he saw a lot of nudity and sex at a young age. Wow, how, how strange. Okay. How am I doing, Bill? I think I don't work with Stoney, am I? Fast forward to 1991, Brian walked into a bar and met Peter North. Of course, Peter denied who he was, being ashamed of being a porn star, but two years later, fate would bring them together again. Finally, Peter admitted who he was and they became friends. Peter said, if you have 300 porn movies in your collection, maybe you should make your own. At first, Tony was hesitant. He thought it was just a pipe dream until he met a six-foot-seven mob guy in Chicago by the name of Big Mike who happened to be a huge weed grower 
decided to partner up with him. Then it became a reality. This partnership would dissolve quickly when Big Mike had to leave the country to avoid federal marshals on the ground. Nice guy, Big Mike. He shot his first movie that sold to the legendary Russ Hampshire of VCA. Keep in mind, this was the first time Stoney was ever on set. He was forced to become the cameraman because the guy he hired flaked. The movie did tremendous sales. Not bad for a guy straight off the street. Most people would take years to learn what he, what he learned on his first day. He had, has had many hit movies. In 1994 with Snatch Motors, in 1996 with Gold Diggers, in 1998 with Hot Bods and Tailpipes, in 2000 with The Fast Times and Deep Crack High, in 2004 with lethal hardcore titles, Anal Consumption, and I Was Tight Yesterday. Now, 2015, Lethal Hardcore is stronger than ever and still evolving. Stoney still puts his blood, sweat, and semen into every production. This guy is known for his outrageous titles. For example, Fuck My Mom and Me. Your mom tossed my salad. I don't want to breathe, so swallow my seed. My porn agent popped my cherry. Drop them drawers and give daddy some candy. I don't care if you're so sore. Let's fuck some more. Crazy in the head, crazy in the bed. And pussy farts. <laughs> Titles have also been inspired by women he has known over the years, such as she divorced me, so I fucked her attorney. And in May, look for that rapper destroyed my crapper. Okay. <laughs> After 20 years in the game, Stoney is still just as excited and perverted as his first day on the job. In fact, pornography for him is a hobby, a true pleasure that he still enjoys to this day. It's never been just to make money for him. He has provided handcrafted adult movies for over two decades. Always the innovator, never the imitator. He makes porn hot enough for a blind man to come. He may have just jerked off, so be careful when shaking hands with him. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my privilege to induct Stoney Curtis into the XRC Hall of Fame for directing. Thank you, Herschel. I'll make my brief. I know I was long with you. Basically, I just want to thank the writers of the XICO Hall of Fame for inducting me. I think this is a real honor to be part of uh, the Directors Hall. Bill, thank you very much. There's only like 40, 41 other directors, so I'm very honored to be part of it. Um, and I also want to say, I also want to say, thank Lethal Hardcore, all my uh, staff, and Dan Jolson, who's sitting right there and discovered me back in 93, bought my first picture of PCA. He still works for me today, 22 years later. Um, but the most important thing I want to thank is the talent. Because if you guys didn't have the balls and the courage to take your clothes off in front of a pervert like me, so I could film you and turn it off to it later, and sell it and actually make fucking money off it. I mean, this is the greatest job in the world. So I want to thank the talent. I want to thank the guys and the girls, so you guys should give yourself a round of applause. I'm serious, because if it wasn't for you guys, I didn't have a career, none of us were. Thank you. This fucking guy wrote a book. This is a fucking manifesto right here. There's no more of those. The Herschel Savage, a triple X porn star, 